Do you think that there's something that Apple is doing to navigate uncertainty, macroeconomic uh, volatility and the like that Amazon and Metas of the world are not? Well, you, uh, Apple has always had magic. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, they since the day I invested, which is a long, long time ago, they seem to come out with newer products, uh, newer variations of products. And their service business keeps going up. And uh, just go to any one of their retail stores and see the lines outside, and you'll get an idea of just how vibrant it is. And I, I think that it just has demonstrated that it's a it's a company that one wants to be involved in forever, uh, and, and they've proven it year after year. So it's had interim fluctuations, but I think on a long-term basis, it only seems to go up. What do you make of these tech valuations now? Does it mean, one, does it mean that growth at, at any cost is just over? There's no more patience for that. Well, I think that uh, that's a very uh, appropriate comment. Uh, you know, there's just so much uh, growth you can have where by pouring in uh, money to spend, for example, in Meta, the, what they're spending on this Meta uh, Meta platforms in the whole uh, uh, AR, VR area is really uh, astounding when you see the decline that's happened in that company, uh, which frankly is a direct reflection of the decision that Mark Zuckerberg made to uh, plow into this. I mean, I invested in the first vert virtual reality company, which was backed by Jaron Lanier, uh, believe it or not, in 1984, uh, when the, it was just, the concept was just concepted, but just originated. And here we are, uh, what, uh, 30, 40 years later, and it's now a commercial product, uh, hopefully. And I don't think uh, that the metaverse has really proven itself yet. And I think we have to see but, what's but happening. But isn't meantime, that the idea? I mean, like wh when you're talking about the metaverse, it's it's a concept that Mark Zuckerberg clearly thinks is worth investing in and building and and letting some people play around with it. I mean, isn't that how big concepts that change the world happen? Yeah, but just think of what the cost is. He's plowed into this, and I, it's all based on uh, a concept that is uh, that's why I was pointing out has been around a long, long time. And he is now betting the farm, frankly, on the success of this concept, which in, involves a whole new way of looking at at services and products, and you know, from medicine to education to, of course, content. And I think that uh, it's a bet. If he wins, uh, it's going to take a while to recover the kind of costs that have gone in to develop this, and uh, what the decline it's resulted in in the value of the stock, which is, I mean rather scary, 75% of the value of the company is going down in, what, just the last year? Yeah, yeah uh, Mr. Patrickoff, welcome. We're glad to have you with us. You, you've you had a lifetime of experience in the markets. You're 87. You say you're going to live to, what, 117? I wouldn't 14, bet. 114. 114. I beg your pardon there. I, I, wouldn't I had bet a birthday it. this week, and I was 88. Uh, 80, <laughs> oh, wow. Well, then Happy we're out birthday. of date. Happy birthday, <laughs> and, and I wouldn't bet against you. As you observe the markets recently, what has your lifetime of experience taught you that you are seeing today that you think would help our audience the most? Be a better investor. Uh, I, I actually am prepared to give you a very direct response to that. I have Do been it. through so many cycles, and the markets just don't go in one direction. They have a habit of just going up and at some point correcting. And we're in a period of a correction now. What concerns me is that a lar very large percentage of the people who are investing, particularly in the area I'm in, venture capital, didn't live through the last big uh, setback, which I mm -hmm. would say was around the time of the bubble in 2000, 2001, 2002. And it took a long time to recover. And so you have people who are dealing with a period of time in the last 20 years, except for the blip in 2008, I admit that. Uh, but it's going straight up. And they can only see thing in a things in a positive way that, uh, you know, the markets are going to go up, the valuations are going to go higher. And I think that uh, this is a good time to have discipline and to understand that uh, there are corrections and we're going through one now. And the question is how long that correction and how deep that correction is going to go. You know, we largely pay attention to publicly traded companies because we like to see what the stock is doing from day to day and minute to minute.
I'm curious, in, in private equity, do you think that the valuations that, that private companies are seeing right now are about right? I, uh, let's, let me differentiate between venture capital and private equity. Private equity more refers to companies at a later stage that are uh, dealing with larger sums uh, in, for, the, uh, for the most part. In the venture business, you're talking about early stage young companies that are at a growth stage where, frankly, uh, to be honest, inflation, interest rates, uh, politics, uh, uh, what's happening in Ukraine really don't affect the day-to-day -day operations of companies that are in the early stage of their growth. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.